Alaska is home to some of the worst mosquitoes in the world, and our little cabin site is overrun with them for the months of June and July. Turns out melting snow and boggy ground are perfect habitat for them. If you've got standing water on your property, you probably have mosquitoes too. In this video, we're going to share some tips on how we've learned to control them and what we do to put up with the ones that we can't get rid of. I know it's not what you want to hear, but mosquitoes do have some redeeming qualities. Firstly, it is true that only the females bite. That's because she needs a blood meal before she can lay eggs to produce the next generation. The males get by on pollen and nectar. In fact, mosquitoes are one of Alaska's major pollinators of uh, flowering plants. We found it best to use a combination of tactics when controlling mosquitoes. There really is no magic bullet. I think of it this way. We humans have had a few thousand years fighting mosquitoes. Mosquitoes have been around for 200 million years and in that time they've evolved to become nearly perfect predators. They're able to overwhelm or outsmart anything we throw at them really. The single best thing you can do to control mosquitoes is to clear your property or clear back away from your, your cabin or other areas where you have to hang out because mosquitoes hate open country and they they really hate wind so if you're in the middle of a big field like this mosquitoes really don't exist out here or they, they hate to hang out here for very long they'll wait till the wind dies down at least if they have to come out and and feed so clearing property now that's a long-term goal it's a lot of work to clear property and i have to admit that you know we've been focused more on the build of the cabin than we have on clearing but as soon as the cabin gets dried in you can bet there's going to be some trees hitting the ground. It's also important for uh, fire protection. The most effective strategy for controlling any pest is to interrupt their life cycle. So it would help to do a quick rundown of the mosquito's life cycle. After a blood meal, the female goes to lay eggs on some sta standing water. She'll lay about up to 200 eggs in one clutch. And they can even lay those eggs in an area where water where they instinctively know that water will accumulate and those eggs can remain viable for several months or even a year through dry weather and freezing temperatures. After they hatch the baby ones which are called larvae live in the water for two or three weeks and they go through two stages in the water. The first stage is when they're actively feeding on microorganisms in the water and that's the stage when they're the most vulnerable. Then they go through a second stage in the water where they stop feeding and develop into the flying mosquitoes. After that they, they emerge from the water and become the flying biting little pests that we that we love to hate. The best thing that we found to interrupt their life cycle is a line of products made by Summit Chemical. Mosquito dunks is what they're called and they also have mosquito bits which is uh, similar but in smaller particles. Uh, they are basically a an inactive bacteria that attacks only the mosquito and only in the, the larvae stage when they're actively feeding. It's safe for animals and fish to drink that water. It's even a, uh, approved by the uh, US EPA for use on organic vegetable crops. Uh, the bacteria is known as BTI and it's a naturally occurring bacteria so by using it you're really only introducing a natural predator in order to control the mosquitoes. It's not a chemical per se. The key is to distribute the dunks and the bits in your standing water early in the season before the mosquito have a chance to move on past the second stage in their in their larvae stage. You need to get it to them when they're actively feeding so you got to get it out there early. We walk our property early in the spring when there's still snow on the ground and, and, the, and the melting snow is starting to turn into standing water and we distribute uh, the dunks, which are like little donuts, and the, and the bits, um, even in areas where we know that water is going to end up standing. The dunks, which are like little donut shapes, as I said, they're designed to just float on the surface of the water and slowly dissolve, and that distributes the BTI toxin that way, whereas the bits are small chunks about the size of uh, corn and they're easy to toss out and spread. Our first days in using them, we did a controlled experiment where we collected some samples of mosquito larvae from our property. Uh, we, we took two buckets, 
each bucket had hundreds of mosquito larvae in it, and we put a small piece of uh, dunk inside one bucket. Then we took a, a screen and placed it over each sample so that nothing could fly in or out. And uh, I was surprised to find that after only eight hours, almost all the larvae in the dunk bucket were dead, whereas in the, uh, the other bucket with, that had no dunks, there were still hundreds of little wigglers in there. And we've made dunks and bits part of our mosquito control program uh, for every, every spring. We usually pick them up at Home Depot, but sometimes they're out depending on the season, so we'll leave a link to this and the other products that we use in uh, the show description below. Once they start to fly and bite, you're kind of stuck with them until they complete their life cycle, which can take several weeks or even months. So as much as we hate it, we've learned to just endure them until they start to disappear. And in our neck of the woods, that's usually midsummer. Of course, there are mosquito traps of all sorts. Some of them are completely useless, and some of them actually catch a lot of mosquitoes. So traps can be a part of your strategy, but if you're in the middle of a large area with prime habitat for mosquitoes, your trap might even might not even keep up with uh, the mosquitoes that are coming in. In other words, the trap will just keep gobbling up mosquitoes and more come in to take their place. A lot of people swear by a trap called a mosquito magnet, and we have tried one of those, but we found that since we're off-grid, we had to get the very expensive model, which have a battery, a rechargeable battery. At the time, I think it was about a $500 trap, and I'm just not sure if it did any good. The thing to remember about traps is, by design, they do attract mosquitoes. So putting them too close to where you hang out can be like ringing the dinner bell. In my opinion, traps are best used around a perimeter to help control mosquitoes that might come in from the surrounding area. Something we're just starting to try is swallow boxes. Swallows are a migratory uh, bird, several species of them, uh, but they do eat a lot of mosquitoes. I've read up to 800 mosquitoes a day each bird. But what you do is you build a, uh, a box with certain dimensions that attract swallows and you hang them in the trees. Uh, there's downloadable plans on the internet. Uh, supposedly if you put a half a dozen or a dozen, as many as you can, around your property, the birds will come in in the spring, find these set up nests in there, and they'll help control the mosquito population. They catch them in midair. Um, Pretty, pretty neat to watch. So we're in the process of building some swallow boxes uh, and we'll just have to let you know how they work. But they're pretty cheap to build and very simple so it's worth a try. One thing we've noticed is that mosquitoes tend at our property to be more active in the evening just before sunset. So it's a good idea to take notice of when they're active and just try to confine your activities indoors you'll find that when you know, a couple wait a couple hours and you come back out and, and they're not around. When you do have to be outside while they're active, of course it's a good idea to cover up all the skin you, you can. Um, we wear head nets, gloves when we can, and we found that uh, one, one thing that works really well is mechanics uh, jumpsuits, long sleeve ones. It's uh, made of a thick material that they really have a hard time biting through. So basically you just, you, you, if it's hot outside, you wear shorts and a t-shirt underneath the mechanic's jumpsuit and you can get your work done. Um, and just be sure you wear a head net. I always like to wear a hat with a brim on it that keeps the net away from my skin. If the, anywhere the net's touching your skin, the mosquitoes can bite right through it anyway. One thing that I wanted to say about head nets is some of them are made of a very shiny material and I've noticed that when you when you're working in the sun like a day like this you have a really hard time seeing through the material so when you're looking for head nets um, try to get one that has a flat flat material no sheen to it in Alaska in the summertime I won't go out in the woods without it at one or two in my backpack at all times and I usually keep about a dozen head nets around the cabin or different places where we go if the bugs are really bad I'm all for using bug repel. So we don't put it on our skin, we put it on our outer layer of clothing and a, a little bit, a little squirt on your hat once in a while, maybe a little bit around your ankles if they're, if they're coming at you from the bottom. Uh, and it wears off after about 30 minutes, so you're going to want to reapply it every hour, but sometimes it's what you have to do to get a job done outside. You also want to get the highest concentration of DEET that you can find. 
100 percent is what we use and uh, the two brands that we tend to pick up um, sawyer and bins at 100 percent deep stream also be aware that mosquitoes are attracted to the carbon dioxide in your breath and your body heat we have noticed with our camper that the refrigerator which is a propane refrigerator is ventilated right next to the entrance to the camper so if our refrigerator is running and the mosquitoes are in season, the mosquitoes literally mob you as you come and go from the door. Uh, so we sometimes have to shut off the refrigerator in order to keep them away from our door. Uh, the water heater on your camper will do the same thing. Anything that's burning a flame or producing a little bit of heat. We've also discovered a deep based repellent, a small area repellent, that it's basically a, a, a small tiny flame that heats up a pad that's soaked with with DEET. It's, uh, it's called Patio Shield by Thermocell. We picked them up at Home Depot also, uh, but the, uh, you know they work pretty well for a small area, like a 15-foot diameter, like maybe in a picnic tent it. or something. So there you have it, our strategy for dealing with the dreaded swarms of Alaska mosquitoes. Of course, we're always eager to hear your ideas on how you control the little demons. So by all means, scroll down to the comments and let us know what your secret weapon is. If we can, we'll put it to the ultimate test in far out Alaska. So if you got anything out of this, then like, subscribe, share, comment, and thank you for your time.